guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I want to start off this video by announcing the five winners of the Florette new Florette's new Discovering Dahlia's book. Um, in fact, that was part of the first video that I'm gonna be answering questions from. Um, in that video, I planted sweet peas, uh, checked our dahlias, and then unboxed a box that Florette sent out. And it was full of a bunch of goodies, including a book, uh, her brand new book, Discovering Dahlia's, uh, one copy for me and then five copies for me to give away. So the winners are, and Erin picked these at random this morning and emailed you all on YouTube or messaged you on YouTube um, or commented. I just replied to the reply comments on YouTube, to yeah. comment. Gosh, I don't know how anything works <laughs> ever. Anyway, um, the winners are Iris Ann's Studio, Sarah Gebert, Deborah Harding, Tammy Bailey, and Caitlin Johnson. Congratulations to the five of you. As soon as you get your info to us, we will ship those books out to you. And I think you're really gonna enjoy it. I've had a chance to really kind of pour through mine and it is full of great information. And more than that, the pictures are so inspiring. It makes me wanna make a flower arrangement like right now, like today. Also, just a quick reminder on these giveaways, we will never ask for more than just a shipping address um, when trying to get you your prize. So there's a lot of scammy kind of things going on these days to a lot of people, a lot of different pages this is happening to. So anyway, just be aware of that. Um, anyway, let's just get into the questions from that video. Um, so Phyllis said, Erin, can you share your camera repair source? I watered mine with the flowers last year. You're, Laura, you're not alone. Phyllis, you are my people. Canon warranty. Department. Canon warranty department? Yeah, you just oh. get on <laughs> canon.com or whatever, canonusa.com and fill out a warranty claim. All the artsy said, is that the Dahlia crates, is it that the Dahlia crates weren't rotated so the top ones dried out and the bottom ones were slightly more wet? Yes, slightly. I mean, definitely, because the top ones were getting more air. The bottom ones weren't getting as much air, so those naturally will stay more moist. But I think some of the crates were given a little, maybe a little bit too much moisture, like the vermiculite was a little bit too wet. But I was really uh, pleasantly surprised by the state of our dahlia tubers. Now, I didn't plow through each one of those crates because it does create an enormous mess. And I just kind of figured I'll kind of uh, spot check some crates and I can kind of get a general flavor for how things are going. So if everything looks the way that the crates I checked looked, we're in for a really good year because uh, I don't think that I will have lost very many, which is really exciting. I did order some though. Um, anyway, uh, maybe every month or so they should have been rotated top two to the bottom and such, or was it necessary to really spray down the top ones? Um, it was my intention to be better at rotating, but you know, I was, for part of the winter, I was eight, nine months pregnant, and then I had and have a newborn, kind of. She's seven weeks old today. She doesn't feel like a newborn anymore. Like She's starting to smile more. Yeah, oh my gosh, yesterday morning, I she was in such a smiley mood. My face was hurting because I was smiling so hard back at her. Um, anyway, it's just, it's getting really fun because she was smiling here and there. Um, and I feel like they were sincere smiles, but it was very fleeting and it's more predictable now. You can, like, yeah. you can kind of like generate a smile whenever you want. Yeah. Well, she has like certain time frames now where it's like, this is going to be a good time. frame. <laughs> She's going to be happy for like an hour. Um, Randy said, would you ever consider making your video about dividing the Dahlia tubers earlier? It would really help us Southerners out. You know what? I intend to get to it as soon as we can. Like, it's just, it's on the radar. Uh, as soon as we have a day where I feel, <laughs> do you think we're going to have a day nope. where we're going to feel like, oh, this is Dahlia dividing day because it's going to take forever to do that. Christine said, will you reuse the vermiculite? And if so, will you just store it in the same crates? I do intend on reusing the vermiculite so long as there hasn't been a problem. Like if I had some weird infection station in one of the crates like fungus gnats or something I probably wouldn't save it but what I'll do is I'll just make sure it's reasonably dry and then I'll probably just bag it up I won't keep it in the same crates most likely because I can store those crates in a more efficient manner that they won't take up quite as much space so Rhonda said no vermiculite and that was in reference to the sweet pea seed trays because I did not use vermiculite on the top like as a top dress on the soil I skipped that and I typically will skip that on uh, seeds that I bury deep deeper than like an eighth to a quarter of an inch sweet pea seeds I usually go a quarter to a half inch deep and they've got enough soil on the top to where moisture control is really easy it's on those things that either need to be surface sown, like columbine and snapdragons, things like that, that vermiculite adds just a little bit of extra protection um, 
to those seeds drying out because you don't want your seeds to dry out. It also helps prevent algae growth and things like that. So, um, so you will see vermiculite on top of some of my seed trays and then other seed trays you don't see it and that's why. Mitch said, love the channel. I have a question totally off topic. Is there a video or resource section on how to control pests? I live in zone 10B, Southern California coastal area. A few years ago, I planted a butterfly garden for my mother. The biggest issues I have encountered is the massive amount of yellow aphids that infect my seven plants. I have picked wiped as best as I could. Seems they are more there the next day. I really want to stay away from chemicals as to not harm the monarchs. That's a tough one, especially if you're wanting to attract something um, to your plants and then you've got a pest on your plants. Uh, I would look into biological methods like releasing ladybugs, um, things, something like that. Because if there's a food source, the ladybugs will stick around. They only leave when there isn't a food source. So that's something that typ typically in the spring, you can find bags of ladybugs at garden centers. I don't know about your area, like in Southern California, um, but I know it's a fairly widespread thing. You might even be able to order them online, but that way you can deal with them very organically. Um, and you're not having to use a spray at all because whatever kind of contact killer you're going to use on uh, aphids would kill the butterflies too. So we don't want to, I don't know that there's like an aphid specific. Wouldn't that be awesome yeah. if people could manufacture something that was just like, this one only kills spider mites. This one only kills, right. you know, aphids. This one only kills mealybugs. So you could deal specifically with that bug and you could just willy nilly it, not worry about killing anything else. Victoria said, the book looks nice. I follow you some time now and I like all your videos, but there's a thing. How can you do all the gardening with your hair down? I just feel like I have to answer that question like once a year yeah. or twice a year. Uh, it just makes me want to come and give you a hairband. It's so much harder with the hair getting in the way. Anyway, love your videos and you have such a beautiful family. Um, I get asked that quite a lot and I just am so used to it. It's just what I've always done. I've never been a... I don't want to pull my hair back. I know because I don't want to give the satisfaction. <laughs> um, I just, I've never been a ponytail wearer, wearer, like hardly ever. I don't know. Uh, I used to wear ponytails a little bit. Like I played sports and stuff. So of course I wore ponytails and then like a few days down at the garden center, but not many. I, you just get used to it. And then you get so acclimated to it that um, the thought of getting my neck burned, like it protects my neck and my ears and my and a lot of my face really from sun damage. You just get comfortable with something and you just roll with it. Um, Mud Dev said, I just love how Aaron is so supportive of all the crazy. That's right. Hey now. That's right. I am Super not crazy. Over here. <laughs> um, the crazy. Aaron is crazy too. You want to know what he just bought today? What did I buy? A forklift. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am not as crazy as Aaron on some days. Um, Aaron, you are beginning to sound like Laura with all your plant knowledge. Is that through osmosis? You have learned so much through the yeah. years. Like, um, yeah, you help. I mean, it's <laughs> it's good and bad for me <laughs> because before before we started a YouTube channel, really, like you liked going and, and touring beautiful gardens and things, but that's kind of where your interest level stopped. And you never really kind of bothered with what I was doing outside. You just kind of like, I did my own thing and I got used to that and it was really nice. Like you come help me with heavy stuff mm -hmm. for sure, dig big holes, but, and you never drug your feet really hard about that. Um, but as far as like design decisions and plant decisions, you just weren't really into it. Um, but now, like it's, it's a good thing that you're, you have gained so much because you helped me think of things I would never have thought of like um, being organized about the way we do things, you know, doing things in the proper order. I would never do things in the proper order um, and things. But then there's some times where you're like, are you sure you want to put that plant there? And I'm like, yes, I do want to put that plant there. Don't question me. Northwest Suburban Life said, where did you buy those cell trays for the sweet peas? Also, what is the brand? Um, those are root, deep root trainers and I got them from Gardener Supply. We'll, we will link down below. Sarah said, have you ever considered writing and or drawing your ideas on an iPad? It's not paper, but you get to be as free flow creative as you want and Aaron will have the benefit of your ideas already digitized. We did that for the new property. Yeah. Um, I still don't like the feeling of it. Like, I like the action of like using the eraser <laughs> on my pencil and using a ruler. There's something about that tangible part of it that feeds me a little bit. Um, but I do, I did enjoy being able to like color like the mm -hmm. iPad thing and it was just in photos, right? It wasn't any special program or right. um, anything. Okay, next video is fiddle leaf care guides. Uh, and in that video I have 
had a massive fiddle leaf fig that needed to be cut back and propagated. And I have several fiddle leaf figs around the house, so I thought I'll just gather them all up and we'll just do a little care guide because I feel like I've gained quite a bit of um, knowledge over the past several years taking care of mine and they've done really well. So anyway, that was the whole um, goal of that video. So Sydney said, can you do a care guide for your lemon trees in the sun porch? We did one, didn't we? We did a, yeah, like did a, a whole, citrus whole care guide and yeah. So we'll link that down below. They really like it up here in the sun porch. I think ever since I have moved them in here rather than inside my house, they've been so much happier. They stay much cooler out here and I think that is the key and I know that not everybody has that situation. I didn't at our last house. Like I, it was inside or nothing, you know, inside or let it die outside in the winter time. Um, and it, my plants always seem to defoliate and then they would push new leaves and things and it's just kind of the nature of the beast when you have them inside but anyway i talked about that i think all of that in the care guide so anyway look for the link down below uh rintu said thanks laura for this video i've been waiting for an update for a couple of years could you please post an update the video when the roots grow out of the cutting and the planting of it yes i'll definitely like put that in a vlog or something we'll do some sort of update once I see roots, it'll probably be a month or two though before that happens. Miss Nicola said, where did you get leaf shine? I can't find it online anywhere. So I've had that bottle for a while. It's Bonide brand. I think they had a bottle shortage because of COVID. It's all being used for hand sanitizer now. Yeah, so like they're having, a, anybody that's packaging in plastic bottles is having a really hard time getting their hands on it. Right. So it's just unavailable, I guess, until. Until people stop using hand sanitizer as much, I guess. Or they amp up production of plastic bottles. Uh, Ramika said, sidebar, what is the paint color on your walls? It's so beautiful. You know, every time we do a video in there, I think I should just say, and PS, the paint color is Sherwin-Williams Thunder Gray <laughs> because every time we get questions and it's weird because in different, uh, different videos and different pictures, it can either look dark green or it can look black or it can look dark blue. It's actually a dark green gray and I love it. It's my favorite. My mom used it in her entryway at home and I was like, hey, do you mind me using that color in my gray room? We share a lot of similar style and a lot of similar interests and we're very similar in a lot of ways. But um, so I used it in there and I absolutely love it. It's my favorite. Um, so anyway, Thunder Gray, Sherwin-Williams. Jaime said, great video and info. May I ask what was the electronic gadget in the window? That is a Sonos speaker, I believe. Uh, Golden said, I've had mine for over a year and it's hardly grown at all. Any suggestions on how to get it to move? I have it in my dining room, which faces west. It doesn't get full on sun, but at some point during the day, about half of the leaves have sun. So I would make sure that one, you're rotating your plant for sure so that the you know canopy is getting equal amounts of light. So quarter turn every time you water is a good idea. Um, and then I would make sure you're fertilizing it properly. That's probably what's going on. Use a high nitrogen fertilizer um, in the growing season. So spring through fall, you can do it every couple of weeks and then back off to about once a month during the winter time. Uh, and you should probably start seeing some growth. Next video is cleaning out and planting pots for spring. So I was working up by our Versailles garden underneath our balcony kind of patio area. I never know what to call that. It's uh, technically like uh, portico. Yeah, portico. A structure consisting of a roof supported by columns at inter uh, regular intervals, typically attached as a porch to a building. Oh, exactly so it's, it a it's a portico. Okay, so that it's going to be called that from now on. I was working on the planters in the portico and cleaned out the window boxes, used the most amazing cleaner ever, cleaned up the white window boxes beautifully um, and got four pots planted. So uh, Texas My Texas said, I wonder, does your mom send an email blast to all of her customers telling them they better hurry before Laura comes down? <laughs> she doesn't, um, but maybe she should, I don't know. I think she usually texts me or calls me and says, hey, I just got a new load of annuals, you wanna come see them? So she's totally an enabler. She's like, she enables me to buy all these things, you guys. And typically, like if I know I need a specific amount of things, like the trees on the new property, we went down there and we made a list. In fact, Aaron and I made the list together. And um, if we know we need a large amount of something, we always pre-order or special order that in because I don't want to clean them out of everything. Like that is never my intention. Like I would love to, but um, yeah, if I know I'm doing like a big amount of planters um, and I need the same, a lot of the same thing, I will special order that stuff. Uh, CE for me, C for me. Said, does anyone else watch these videos and picture yourself 10 years in the future, still following the channel and seeing all the new tree plantings in adolescent splendor? I hope we're still doing this in 10 years. Have you thought like that far down the road, what we'll be doing in 10 years? Oh, man. I mean, we'll still have projects 
like crazy around here. Yeah. Um, especially if we're able, yeah, or if we're able to have acquired more space around us, yeah. which is highly possible. Yeah. Um, in time. In time, I don't know. But it'll be interesting in 10 years. Like we, when we set out to do this full time, we totally, we're very realist. We're realists, both of us are. And so we, I don't know, we, oh, there's Benjamin. Hey buddy. We kind of always attack things thinking like this may not be the same way in one year. It may not even be the same way in six months. Yeah. Um, and so we always like, we make all of our financial decisions based off of like, this could Every, implode. Yeah, falls <laughs> yeah like if it falls apart, we wanted to have like set ourselves up the best way possible and not made dumb financial decisions and gotten I mean, into I debt still and, think and that things like that. We're buying like equipment or, or something like that. I'm mm -hmm. thinking to myself, like, okay, if Garden Answer goes away in a year, can I sell this thing? Right. And but you know, that's smart to do. Like, you want to set yourself, not set yourself up to be like it hurt hurting units <laughs> at the end of it all. Um, but it would be awesome if in 10 years, I think Aaron thinks more that way than I do. Um, like you think, okay, how can we make this, like bring longevity to this? Who can we bring in? Um, how can we make this bigger? How can we, you know, like there's a lot of different ideas that go through Aaron's head. And honestly, I'm probably the one that kind of like, I dig in a little bit more and I'm like, let's just, let's just like, there's so much going on. Like, like, uh, I need to fertilize my hydrangeas today. So why don't you ask me that tomorrow? Okay, we were laying in bed last, <laughs> we were laying in bed last night. And it was, I don't even know what time it was. I could hear Samantha sucking on her fingers and we were kind of laughing. And um, so we were hearing that, you know, kind of sound. And then Aaron kind of props himself up and he's like, hey, so you notice like there's like a field of green weeds going up. How do we handle that? How should we handle the weeds in the new property? And I'm like, Aaron, are you kidding me? It is 1130 at night right now. I am not talking to you about weed control. Not right now. <laughs> I need to sleep. Um, so anyway. Like you just constantly, you would be like just all the things. I'm an idea man. You are an idea man. I have to execute on a lot of the ideas. And so I think I get a little bit more overwhelmed because yeah. it usually means a little bit more work for me Not in a different way. It's in a physical way for me. Um, and you take care of all the details in the back end of everything. So, I mean, there's, there's a probably equal amount of work. It's just different, yeah. <laughs> different. Yeah. I'm the one that thinks about the taxes. Yeah, I don't think about the taxes. Well, I do think about the taxes. Enough to be irritated about the taxes, but um, not like you do. Tiramisu said Benjamin was so cheeky when he looked like he was going to stick his tongue in the drink. Yes. Benjamin is totally in that phase right now where if you tell him, like, don't touch that cup. Like, it's breakable. You know, be careful around it. There's hot coffee in it. He'll do one of these. Like, kind of side eye and kind of, like get really close like I'm not touching it can't get mad kind of a thing so we're in constant correction mode at the moment just little things here and there and he is a good kid he really is we were blessed with a really good little boy but he's still a three-year-old little boy and very rambunctious full of energy and full of noise um all the time so he he is a total delight though we love him um Denise said how satisfying is it to watch the scrubbing of the window boxes I was actually kind of excited when I set that camera up. I'm like, oh, I'm excited to watch this footage back because I have tried all the things I could think of to clean those stains off those boxes up to this point. And one of you guys, it's been like two years probably since you sent me that Euro scrubby stuff. And I don't know why, like I kind of just, like I put it away with the cleaning supplies and you just kind of forget about it, you know? And so we were going through all of our stuff, kind of cleaning it out the other day and I saw it again and I thought, I'm gonna try this out. And I wish I would have tried it sooner because, oh my goodness, it made those boxes look brand new. And it's not a product we can easily get our hands on here in the US, and I don't know why. But to whichever one of you guys has sent that out to me, thank you so much. I'm going to save it and savor it and use it just for stuff like that. Oh, I was able to get a water ring that has been in the bottom of our kitchen sink on the left side, so not the disposal side, but so at some point in time, I think it was there when we moved in, something sat in that sink and created a stain, like an, a weird shaped stain around the drain. And we couldn't get it out. Every, we've tried lots of different products on that as well. And it took that Euro scrubby stuff, took that, the stain off. I'm so happy about that. Cynthia said, those can stay in here indefinitely, quotes. <laughs> That's what I said about those Alberta spruce lollipops in the pots. And that is kind of a, funny statement because you know I won't probably keep them in there forever. Maybe a couple seasons, 
maybe just one season. I don't know. I tend to like to move things around and have a different look every single season. They will get utilized somewhere though. If not in those containers, they'll be moved to another container or somewhere out in the yard. Um, Becky said those spruces that you had flanking your doorway, how often did you water those in the winter? So I had four spruces, the two big blue spruces that are still sitting up there. I think we might place and plant those today. Um, and then there's the small spruces in the pots that I took out. And both of those, or all four of those rather, were watered about every two to three weeks through the winter. Cassie said, beautiful containers, very springy. How are the love and a puff seeds coming? Mine still haven't germinated and I'm starting to panic. Don't panic, love in a puff takes forever. Um, I actually think I'm gonna experiment with soaking. I think soaking those seeds might have helped. I didn't pre-soak mine either, but um, mine are coming up, like uh, some of them shot up really quickly and they're already really tall. And then I'm noticing like every day I have a new one popping up and they're just tiny compared to the other ones. So I don't know what the difference is. I just think maybe make sure you're keeping everything moist enough so that that hard seed coat, seed coat has an easy time kind of softening so that the seed can germinate. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. If you have extra love in the puff seeds, maybe soak them and pop them in the seed, the cells so that you're, you know, sure to have some <laughs> growing in your garden this year. And then the next video was we planted an orchard. So Aaron and I got out there on the new property uh, and we planted nine fruit trees. Uh, Maria's Moments USA said, very nice. We just bought a 26 acre property. We are by no means a farmer. Uh, may I know which company you ordered your trees from? So we got them through my parents' garden center. They get them from J.F. Schmidt, um, who is a massive tree grower. They, I think they shipped the whole country. Um, I'm fairly certain of that anyway. But they get theirs, I think they get their fruit tree starts though from Dave Wilson. Their Dave Wilson started trees and then they go to Schmidt who pots them up and grows them on and then they, yeah, so they go through a couple different companies before they even get to my parents' garden center. Um, anyway, they are really nice quality trees though. We've been ordering them that way for lots of years. Uh, Lando said, do you have an irrigation system for that area? So we are looking into subsurface irrigation for that, spa for that space where you essentially just bury drip line, which is uh, spaced every 18 inches. And so you never see it. You never see the tubes, which is perfect because we wanna be able to walk through that area wherever we want without tripping on any kind of irrigation. I also wanna underplant those trees with some kind of, I want it to feel um, less structured, like a little more meadowy and um, like with little chamomile type flowers, you know, like the little dainty looking flowers. Um, and I would love to scatter some bulbs, some spring bulbs in there that come up, like maybe some daffodils that can naturalize in that space. Um, so we can't really have, I mean, you would have to have sprinklers that were tall enough to water all of that from overhead if we do want to seed it that way. In which case you're getting your fruit trees wet, you're overspraying your fence, which we're having stained black. And then if you get hard water on that, you're going to have white, like arcs of white on that fence. So it'd look really bad really quickly. So if the subsurface irrigation works out really nicely, it will both water our trees and whatever we plant under them and you won't ever be able to see it. And that would be a super great answer if we ever want to do grass walkways, which we've talked about so much, but like, how do you water a grass walkway? Well, if you can put drip irrigation under the ground, and is it okay though? I was thinking to like run mowers over the top of it and mm -hmm. totally Anything. fine. Anything, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Jennifer said, I'm curious what kind of ground cover will you have in your orchard? Oh, I just, I just talked about that. Um, so I'm still, unsure of what I'm going to use, but I want to find some type of a grass that stays fairly green. Like that's really important to Aaron. He doesn't want it to brown out too quickly, which is, I mean, when you have irrigation, you can really get away with a lot, but a lot of the dryland grasses and like naturalizing grasses that we plant here tend to brown out in the middle of summer and we want it to look fairly lush and I want there to be flowers in it too of some kind. Uh, Beth said, off subject a bit, but you, did you ever get grass to grow under your maples lining your driveway? Yes, we did. It came up beautifully. And it's just like this little haze of green. There's full of weeds too, though. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have some weed stuff to deal with this year. But we knew that that was, that was inevitable on a new piece of property like that where weeds have been just growing forever. Do I have a cat behind me? I do, this whole time. He just like uh, shifted and hit my back. Anyway, we are so excited to get the grass seeded on the other side of the lane. Um, we've already talked with our landscaper who does all of our irrigation. And so he knows like he's already planning on, like you guys have already talked about where you want all the trenching and all of that, right? Yeah, there's gonna be a lot going on here pretty soon. There really is. Um, yeah, a lot going on. In fact, I think this week we're gonna be tilling and setting up the irrigation to our cut flower garden. Can you believe that in March? 
I just, I'm so excited to have that ready at the proper time instead of in June like last year. So it should be really a fun, fun spring. Uh, William said, can you make a video of succulent arrangements, please? I love those. Yes, we were just talking about it. We will probably have something succulent related coming out here pretty quick. Amy said, will you ever keep bees again? I don't know if I will ever personally keep bees again. I mean, I've tried twice, they left both times and I don't know why they left. Um, I would love it if I could get with a beekeeper in our area or an apiary, apiarist, apiary, apiary person. Somebody who wants to come bring their bees here and let them do their thing here and then they can come gather them up and they can do it. I'm just not like super interested on the research side of things and having another thing to take care of and worry about. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, here he is. Hey, Russell. We need to hire somebody else who's just like really into like doing researching. stuff like that. Yeah, and like knowing the ins and, and then, outs of things. And then uh, we can you know, use that person's expertise to make some videos about different yeah. topics. I'm like, let's slap it against the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. SR, uh, SRL said, gosh, this video came at just the right time for me. We we're getting ready to plant a small orchard of our own. What distance did you have in between the trees? So we planted semi dwarfs, which typically in our area grow about 15 feet wide. And so we wanted to make sure that, um, so seven and a half feet on center. So seven and a half feet from each side of the trunk. And then we made sure that there was about three and a half, you know, it's between three and a half and four feet between each tree canopy at maturity so that there's lots of airflow and light through that area. We didn't want to congest it down and make it too tight in there. We wanted it just to feel very open and let the trees have some space. Penny said, the land looks so different, so much smoother, and it seems way more brown than gray. Did you add anything to um, all the soil in the new area? Well, that's just the product of it being wet. So just give it a minute and it'll turn whitish gray again. And in fact, it looks pretty white gray out there right now. Whoops, I dropped my mic. That's why we're able to um, till because it's finally drying out enough to till. But that day it was actually fairly uh, moist out there. Uh, and the soil does look nice when it's moist. It is a lot more smooth though. Chad came out and he took his road grader over the whole thing and smoothed and leveled out the whole space. It's really nice. Crystal said, will you be staking your trees? I know you said you usually get high winds in the summer over there. I think we probably should look into doing that, Erin because we did not stake the maples along the, the, the lane and we knew that eventually we were probably gonna have to do that because it is, it's pretty intense, our winds can be. We typically don't like to stake things until we see an issue with it, but in that case, because these are so exposed out there, we just know that there probably will be an issue if we don't do that, so that's probably something we'll tackle this year. Kyle said, how often do you have to wash your shoes? Are you, <laughs> as you were digging, I was imagining how much dirt I would be getting in those shoes. It's almost like I'm wearing sandals, really. I hardly ever wash my shoes, hardly ever. Like, usually I wear them out before I ever think about washing them. I don't know, I just have like perma-dirty feet, <laughs> a lot. It's a good thing that like, my parents have a swimming pool, like that's the best way to get my feet clean. Just go swimming a whole bunch in the summertime. And the last video was spring rose pruning. So I have started, I'm not done yet, pruning my roses back for spring. And I showed you on the At Last Rose how I go about pruning mine. And I should have, the one thing I didn't talk about, Erin, was like the different categories of roses. You know, because there's the climbers and landscape oh, roses sure. and hybrid teas. And so the only roses, uh, there's kind of like three categories for me in terms of pruning. So there's your landscape roses, like um, I've got Oh So Easy Paprika, and I've got some other, let's see, Lemon Zest and Peachy Cream, Peachy Cream or Peachy Keen, can't remember. Those type of roses, those kind of shrub landscape roses, a lot of times you can leave them alone. You can cut them back if you want to, just to size control them or shape them up, or if they've got a wild arm, you can cut that off. Um, and then you can remove leaves and go from there. They're a lot more easy maintenance that way. The, the way I trimmed these is the way I trim like any of my David Austin's hybrid teas, um, the at last like I have there, uh, any of those types of roses, that's how I tackle them. And then climbing roses I do a different way. So I do have some climbing roses I have yet to prune, so we'll probably put together a video about that when I get ready which is hopefully this week. Um, North Texas Dude said, what is the short white border wall by the big rose bush? I have no idea what that is. Original to the house, perhaps? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no clue. I've never noticed it. Maybe it's used to being hidden by the old privet hedges. There was actually no privet hedges there, but there's usually so much going on around here. It's like the art of distraction, right? you know? 
Um, I think we will remove that. We're gonna remove that and the white fence with the arbor, um, and we're gonna redo our entrance back there at some point in time. I don't even know what that would look like. Sarah said, what gloves are you using? So those are the Felco gloves. They're fairly new to their line, um, and they're a little bit thicker than the Atlas Nitro ones that I used to wear a lot more. I still feel like I have dexterity with them, but they are a little bit thicker. Rose, Rose's uh, thorns will still get through them though. So like I was not immune to that. In fact, if I could pull my sleeve up, which I got like lots of layers on right now, I've got scratches like crazy on my arms because I ended up taking my coat off. <laughs> it was warm that day. Jennifer said, if you did a hard rejuvenation prune on a flowering shrub, say a lilac, so that the resulting new growth is smaller, where do you put the fertilizer? Out where the old drip line was or near the base of the plant where the new growth is? Um, typically, I mean, if that's where, how big your shrub was, that is where the drip line technically is and that's where the most active roots are. So, I mean, I think that you could fertilize anywhere and it'll eventually get down to the roots of the plant and the plant can utilize it. Um, but I would probably sprinkle it around the old drip line of the plant. I think if you just uh, fertilize in the general vicinity of that shrub, you're good. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I have two rose bushes that have gone wild, I think. Do I dig them up and get rid of them? I get straggler stems that get really long and the flowers are not like rose flowers. They're not pretty to look at. If it's not pretty to look at and it's something you're dealing with that keeps on happening, get rid of it. Dig it up, put something new in there and don't don't mess with that business. Nope. Billy said, Laura, I have a rose bush that was planted by the mailbox and I truly believe it's a climber. I wanna relocate it this spring. Can you tell me when would be the best time to do so? I'm in zone 5B Denver, Colorado. I would probably tackle it as soon as you can. Um, and so long as you don't have snow on the ground, I would do it while the plant is still dormant or before it takes off You know, with a lot of active growth this spring. That's if you really wanna get it done this spring. You could also wait till fall um, and you could do that usually about six weeks before your first hard frost. And that way it has time to root in. But yeah, I would take after it ASAP. I have to do the same thing though. We've got so many roses around the gazebo. I was out there cutting them back yesterday. And um, in fact, that brings me to my next question, which is Nancy's. She said, I planted my two-year-old David Austin roses last spring. They did great, but unfortunately I need to transplant them to another spot. Should I prune them before moving? And we'll add biotin when I transplant, but when should I fertilize? So I, I would prune them definitely before moving them because then the root system doesn't have so much to support, so much growth to support once you remove it. Um, that way it can focus on a smaller amount of foliar growth and, and such. Um, definitely use Biotone starter fertilizer when you fertilize it, or when you move it rather. And then I wouldn't worry about fertilizing it again per, for probably like, I'm gonna move mine in front of the gazebo because that is where we're putting the glass greenhouse. I'll put, use biotone when we move them and then I'll probably fertilize again in May sometime, maybe May, June-ish. And Fab Dancy said, who is ready for Laura's spring bulb videos? I am, I want the bulbs to come up quicker. They're already up out, out of the ground a couple inches and it's making me so excited. Um, for those of us who live in an area that cannot really do tulips, we wait until fall and uh, winter for y'all. Granted, I do not like tulips, but I like other people who like tulips. <laughs> um, it's gonna be an interesting bulb year because I'm looking out at all the containers that we planted up with bulbs in front of the greenhouse and I see two daffodils coming up so far, that is it. But like all the bulbs in the ground are already coming up so much. And then all the daffodils, have you noticed Aaron, in the pots along the east side fence line? they're only coming up on the south side of the pots. Really? So every single pot, there's like a huge drift of them coming up on the south side, like around the rim. But like it's silent springs and the rest of the pot. I wonder if it's just because of the, the warmth? I don't know, I hope. I hope the rest of the pots pick up and grow. I wonder it's just if weird it warms, that it's every one of them. I wonder if the sun warms the concrete it could and gets be. those going sooner. That's interesting. I know, I don't know. It might be a really weird bulb tour year for us. But the minnow daffodils I planted in the greenhouse in that little grouping of containers, they're still sitting out there right now because we do have like a 20 some degree night on the forecast. Let me see. Uh, 27, not too bad. The rest of them are above, uh, close to and above freezing. Anyway, I figured that I would just leave them in there for a couple more days, but the minnow daffs are blooming. I posted pictures of them this morning. They are the sweetest things. Aaron, that is the kind of daffodil I would like out in the orchard. Oh, really? Like very sweet, dainty looking yeah. blooms like that. Uh, Christy said, when does the gazebo get taken away and when does your gorgeous greenhouse arrive? I, pff, I they were know. supposed to come get the gazebo late February, but then we had that 
that snow. We had a lot of snow. Yeah, we did. A lot of snow for us. Yeah. Um, that stuck around for a long time, and I feel like it kind of it bumped everybody out about a month. Yeah. So, so maybe the gazebo will leave sometime this month. I was just telling Erin though yesterday that I'm kind of happy with the time frame that everything's going. Like naturally, you want everything to go quickly, and you want the new changes to be in place, and that would be nice. But the fact that it's going to take, I mean, because we have the plans. The general contractor, our general contractor, has the plans for the greenhouse so he can line up everybody that we need. Um, but we weren't able to do that until we had the plans in our hands, which wasn't until last week. Uh, so it's going to take a while to get on everybody's schedule. And so I'm thinking realistically, the Hartley will not be installed and done until probably sometime this fall. Don't you think? Sometime this fall, we'll button it up. Yeah. Which means I get a full season to look at the garden. It'll be in destruction and chaos, but I'll get to look at it and make a, make slower decisions, which makes me happy. <laughs> We might put in some key evergreen pieces, some key um, like bone structure pieces around the Hartley, but I'll get to do this process a little slower, which is my preferred method because we've got a lot to tackle out here in the new property that makes me excited as well. Um, so I feel like my attention won't be so split. Uh, we'll get to enjoy the process a little slower. Doreen said, did you prune your nine bark back there too? I planted some last year and they grew some sporadic long branches and I thought about pruning them, but it seems um, that I've read it's best to just leave them to be the best, to get the best shape. Yes, that is recommended that um, you don't prune your nine barks because they naturally grow in a vase shape. If you get a weird sporadic branch that's in your way or makes the rest of the shrub look weird, I would prune that back. Um, nine bark should not be pruned in the spring if you wanna see blooms because they bloom on old wood. So when I prune my nine barks back up here, I pruned off all the blooms and I totally, that's fine because I was pruning them back to size and shape control them um, because where they're at, I can't let them get naturally as like big and they had some really wild branches going on. And I noticed that those, when I got them from the grower, they were cut back already. Mm. They were cut back in their cans. So like the deed has been done <laughs> with those plants. Um, so I feel like I can continue cutting them back. I'm thinking of moving a fountain up here. I'm thinking about it. I haven't decided yet. I think it'll kind of, once we get everything torn up up here and we get new flower beds put in, I'll know a little bit better what I wanna do. Kim said, I ordered Hollytone for my hydrangeas. Is that okay to use? Yes, absolutely. That's what I used to use in my hydrangeas and still do if that's the bag I happen to have with me. It's totally fine for hydrangeas. Diane said, do you worry about your babies being injured by those huge thorns? I would. No. I find it funny because your personality is that if if any question can be asked, if any question can start off with, are you worried about or are you concerned by the answer, whatever you're going to ask, the answer is always no, not concerned or not worried. True. Well, <laughs> I do worry about some things. Like what? Well, like. You worry about Benjamin playing in the road and like uh, the UPS truck coming. Oh man, Benjamin has That's been. That's a worry. Yeah. You know, yeah. so like um, you're worried at night about um, the baby like breathing. Yeah. I you check know. on the baby breathing a lot. Not as much as I did with Benjamin. Yeah. Um, I worry about uh, all the delivery like truck drivers that deliver stuff and then, you know, our baby's playing in the driveway. Like they. Yeah. You keep He an knows. Eagle you eye can eye ask. Him. You can ask him. He knows. Yeah. Um, and I think it's good to have a healthy fear on some things like kids around equipment, like our yeah, tractor. Right. Uh, like anybody knows who gets in our tractor, you do a perimeter sweep first. Yeah. Like you make sure there is no presence of babies around that tractor because... If you do any moving of equipment, yeah. you need to know your surroundings yeah, at all times. Yeah, that worries me. Um, yeah, whole new level of worry when you have kids and everything else seems to not matter as much. And the roses, like I can't imagine growing up in my parents' garden without roses. How sad. Like, yeah. I want to, I, I don't know. It's, it's a good thing to have these things around though too because then you can teach your kids about tractor safety. You can teach them about not like playing nearby the rose bushes. Yeah. Because you're gonna get hurt. And if you do, then it's your fault at that point and you learn not to do it. You know, maybe what it is, is it's not like fear. It's more like a good, healthy respect yeah. for, for things that can cause damage. Yeah, you have that about like the tractor and stuff yeah. too. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm a little crazy in that department, but, uh, and pool safety. Oh yeah, cause my parents have a swimming pool and I think my mom has that like fear when she was, she was watching 
my uh, two, my niece and my nephew and Benjamin on Fridays. It was like her day to watch the kids. And um, when they were starting to get really mobile, like she just wouldn't even go outside, even in the summer. Like she'd just lock all the doors. Like we're playing inside today because I've got three of you I'm watching. And you know, you're my kids' kids, you're my grandkids and nothing is going to happen to you. <laughs> so anyway, Dorothy said, can you explain the difference between pruning roses like you did in this video versus in your previous videos when you manipulate it to grow outwards? Um, when I'm doing a general prune like this, I don't worry so much about you know exactly where I'm pruning the roses. I usually do that in season when I'm doing deadheading and things because wherever you take your um, cane down, like if there's a bud going this direction and that's where you take your cane um, down to, that's where the new growth will happen. It'll grow out this way. So if the rest, if your rose bush is shaped like this, they're kind of naturally vase shaped. If you cut your branch down to a bud that's facing inward, your branch will grow into the center of the shrub and you don't really want that because it can uh, create some congestion inside there and, and reduce airflow and things. So when you're going in and doing like precision work and you can do this when you're cleaning up in the spring, it just takes a little bit longer. And I think too, like I subconsciously just do it because the more you prune roses, you just like follow the cane down and you cut it right above the bud that's facing the right direction. So just keep that in mind. And that's it. That's it for this week's recap video. Congratulations to all the, bo the book winners of the Florette book. I'm super excited for you guys to see that. Um, we will link her page down below so you can see some information about that. Thank you to all of you guys who left questions and comments on this week's videos. And we are going to go outside and get busy today. I did see that maybe some rain is uh, on the forecast. Did you see that for today? Yeah. Mm, it's not looking like it right now. I think we might have some time to get some stuff in the ground. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're having a great day and hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.